Hi guys and welcome to another Bootstrap web design with the brackets text editor video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Let's get started where we left off. We've been building this site. Let's go down to the bottom. And this is what we did last time with a mouse over effect. What I want to do is add another section below this with a background, a kind of map of the world background. And I'm going to have four little buttons or accordions basically that when clicked, they'll open up a, a little box with a location, photograph and map in it. So let's open our brackets text editor. And here's the files we'll be working on. Uh, anybody that's been following along will know where this is. Uh, if you haven't, here's our folder with our bootstrap website files in it. Here's our index HTML file. We'll be working on this one. And if we open the CSS folder, we'll be working on the custom CSS file here. And all you do is right click and open it with a brackets text editor. There they are right there. If you don't have brackets, it's free and you can download it from a link below this video. So we're working on our index HTML. Let's go ahead and go down to where we left off, which will be the bottom here. And let's create a new section. And I'm going to give it an ID of locations. And as usual, in many of the other videos, uh, we've been using short codes. And we've got, if we go to our file and our extension manager, And these are all free to download. If you haven't got them, go to available and just type, type a bootstrap in here. It'll give you a list of available bootstrap short codes. I'm going to go to my installed tab because I've got mine installed. And mostly what we're using today is going to be this RCH bootstrap for snippets. And if you just click on the more info, it'll take you to their website where it has a little their GitHub page where it has a bunch of short codes that really does make coding so much quicker. It's ridiculous. And it's fantastic. <laughs> and it's free. So let's close this. And let's do some short codes. I'm going to do a container. So Bootstrap 4 container. And as you see, it's prompted me. And it's inserted a nice little container there for us just tidy this up now it's great to type these things out but this is a quicker way of doing it and now I want a, a row because I'm gonna have four different buttons or well, I think I'll have a row with two on the top and two on the bottom so let's, let's do us a little row here so it's BS4 row do one with a column in it. You see it says col and let's put a nice little column in there for us too. And what I want to do is I'm going to make it 12 which will be full width on extra small devices, full width on small devices and just half the width or medium and large devices. What that basically means is when you're viewing on a very small device, it'll stretch each, the whole width of your screen. Same with a medium, like a smartphone or something. Uh, medium, you'll have two there, two columns, and large, you'll have two columns. That will become apparent as we go along. So here's our row and here's our first column and I want two columns on each row. So I'll just copy that, control C 
and put that there. Now I want to copy the whole thing so I've got a row underneath it as well. So we'll have two rows and each row will have two columns within it. Okay, so there we've got it. Now I want to put what they call an accordion inside here and what that is going to be a button that when you push it it's almost like a modal but it's it's, it's not it's just got a little drop down box that will appear below it and if I go back to our snippets shortcode page and go down and it should be called collapsible accordion I believe there we go So let's do the BS4 collapse button. There it is, right there, it's prompted us. And here's the button. And here's the actual contents. Just tidy that up. Okay, well let's just have a look at what we've got here. It's not going to look like much, but it should demonstrate to you what an actual accordion is. So I've saved that. See the little button up there, Control S. Button goes away, it tells me I've saved it. Let's go back to our site and refresh. This should be a little button below here now. So here's that little button we've just created. If I click on it, it opens up this little box with some text inside. If I click on it again, it'll close it. That's a little accordion. What I kind of want to do is I want four of these, two in each row, because we made two rows. And inside, I want I want to give it a title, and then I want to have a little picture and some text we'll just use that dummy text they've got there about each location so let's go back to our brackets and let's call this one New York and here's the actual body which is the contents and if we look at the button here, button primary, we'll change that in a minute, we'll have it like the rest of our buttons. It's target, so that's basically what happens when it, you click it, is a collapse example one, which is the name of this one right here, the name of our contents here, so it knows to open that. So here's a div, inside we've got our writing here, and this is the card body. So I'm going to just wrap that in a P tag, or a paragraph tag, I should say. And I think I'll add a title as well. Just cut that out and wrap our text in it. So our text, text is now in between these two paragraph tags. And I want to give it a title of, say, H2 heading to and we'll just say New York that's fine and let's give it an image on the top actually no let's put the image if we think about it because what I want to do is I want to have a title and I want to have an image with the text beside it. So let's put the image inside here. So it's an image source of where the image is. And I think I've got one called New York NY. Okay, that's it, New York. 
and all images have to have an alt tag that's for people that are sight impaired and it'll uh, a reader will actually read it to them or you can use it for SEO purposes by putting in some of your keywords there okay so we've got that there I'll give it a width and a and a height and it's a square picture so I've got to make them both the same let's say see 150 picks and of course the height wants to be the same Just copy that and change that to height. And close out that tag. And probably going to want to give it a class. So let's give it a class. And Bootstrap 4's by default got some great little image classes. I think what I'll do is is call it uh, rounded. That'll give it slightly rounded corners. If I spell it right, that is. And put it inside my tags. There we go. And a good thing about brackets, if you do something wrong, it'll like if I take that off you'll notice things turn red to let you know that something's not right there with your code so it'll give you a chance to fix it or debug it as they say all right well let's take a look at this and see what we've got now so I'll save control s and back to the site and refresh there we go. Now I've got a button with New York on it. And when I open it, it's got that picture and some text. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly copy this below it so we've actually got more room to see what we're doing here. That was our Jumbotron, wasn't it? So I'm just going to copy that section and plop it below the section we built here. We can remove it. In a little while it just make it easier to see what what's going on here let's save that back to the site refresh now we should have jumbotron down below there it is and here's our new york button yep starting to shape up okay but what i want is let's center this We've got to give it some more space and I want to use these sort of buttons here that we've been using before. And that was called button info, I believe. So let's go back to our brackets. And where's that button? Yeah, button info, button large. So let's just copy that. And we'll replace that button style, that button primary, button info, button large. There we go. Now, if I add the text center class to this, then that should put that button in the middle middle of this, this column right here. And I want to keep this text left over here. So we'll put text left in there so it doesn't try and center align it. And let's give let's give our row a bit of padding for a start. Say a margin at the top, that's M5. We can always change this in a bit, just give it a bit of breathing space at the top there. And 
course I'll do the same for this little row down here as well although it's got nothing in it at the moment let's save that and see what we've got we're getting there now okay let's refresh make sure I save that I didn't save that control s back to the page and refresh there we go that button's now in the middle and we've got some padding at the top here and there it does okay it's getting there but what I want is I want this text to be on the right hand side and the picture to be on the left hand side so what I need to do is float that image to the left let's go back and where's our image here we are here's the class rounded all I need to do is hit float dash left save that and refresh there we go well, that's good good but I want a bit of padding around that text there well, let's put a bit around that image let's give it a p2 tag and see what happens there we go that's added a bit of padding around our little image there that's fine all right so let's now copy this actually let's copy this and insert it in our little box below here Call this one London. Save that. Back to our site. Now when I refresh we should have another one here that says London. But when I click on it, what we're going to find probably is it's going to open the other box. Yeah, it does. And I'm sure you can figure out why that is. If you can't, it's because it's got the same name. This data targets collapse example. That's telling it to open this one. This one has the same one, which is telling it to open this one too. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to call this one. NY and of course I've got to give it the name which is the ID and let's call this one London or LDN let's call it close enough for London and here is the ID to give it the ID of London save that back to our site refresh now they should each open their own little box New York London there we go all right well let's add two more below these and give it a background so let's go back to our bracket software And let's copy this over again. Just want to tidy these up just a tad. And I've just hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. This one. Just 
doing a little bit of housekeeping here. Still could be a bit tidier, but that'll do for the moment. Okay, um, there's our New York, London, say Paris. And where else should we have Tokyo? I think that's how you spell it. Paris and we got Tokyo. And of course we must change the data target. So we've got uh, what we got here, Paris. Let's call this one PRS. And that means we need to change this ID to PRS2. And the bottom one, let's call this TKO for Tokyo. And here's our ID of TKO. Save this. I'm not going to even look at this at the moment. Um, what I want to do, so we've got a row here with two in it and a row here. So we should have two lots of two buttons each. But what I want to do first is put a a background image behind it. I think I'll I'll put a background parallax image again behind it. And if I go back to my website folder, I've got an image that I want to put behind it in my image folder here. It's called world right there. So let's open our custom CSS file which you'll find inside the website folder inside the custom inside the CSS folder and let's drop down to the last place that we left I'll try and do this quickly because this video is running on a bit a little bit and our section was called locations I believe yeah locations So it's an ID, so it's got to be hashtag locations. And what I'm going to do, I want this parallax, a parallax background behind it. So I'm just going to copy this right here and change the image location. So open a curly bracket there because I didn't grab it on the last one. It looks like I'll have an extra one on the bottom there too. So let's get rid of that one. And now that image was called world, wasn't it? There it is. Just check it. Yeah, that's the one. And hopefully we've got that parallax background on this now. Save that. Now let's take a look at our site. We may need to give it some extra padding and margins at the top. So once we refresh this, we should have two more buttons underneath and that world image in the background there. There we go. And like I say, that's that's not looking brilliant at the moment, but so open up a couple of these boxes and you get the idea. But let's close those back up. And I'm gonna want some padding or margins on these buttons. I'm not sure why this one isn't centered. Let's have a look at that. I may have clipped something off somewhere. Which one was it? It's Paris. Oh, I see. No, I don't see. Text center. we need is to put this text center
on all of our little columns there. There we go. And what else do we want to do? We want to give it some margins. They got the rows have got a bit of margin. Let's give our locations ID a bit of padding top and bottom. Let's just say this control S. And we should be able to give it some padding. Let's give it a hundred pixels top and bottom. And fifty pixels left and right, say. We can always change this. That's 100 pixels top and bottom. 50 pixels left and right. Save that. Now let's take a look at our site. And hopefully that should have tidied this up. We should have some space at the top of the bottom here. And these should be, all be central. Let's have a look. There we go. That's fine. The only thing that I don't really like about this I mean, that works absolutely fine. Oh, hello, we got the wrong trigger on Tokyo there, obviously. Is let's just close these up. I'd like to see these buttons all the same width. Um, so it's, I'm guessing it's probably 200, let's say 225. Let's try that. Well, let's just try this. If we inspect it, we can take a look at the button info. Here's the button info. Let's call it uh, width. Say two two five picks. Let's just bring this up so we can see it. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. So let's just uh, copy that. Control C, go back to our custom CSS. And where's our button info? Button info, button info, button info. Here we go. So I just need to add that attribute there. So it's now got a width of 225. Let's save that. And we had a problem with the last button, I believe which will be this one and uh, data target TKO uh, got no hashtag there that's probably the problem debug TKO just make sure the ID is TKO that's correct because <laughs> I put it in the wrong thing right Area expanded that should say false if we look it up here that means it, it starts as closed if you wanted them to all start as open you'd have true here and all the boxes would be open and then when you clicked on them they close um, our data target right here should be TKO debugging love it well, so hopefully that should work now let's just close that one up let's refresh now, Mr. Tokyo, do you work? Yes, you do. Thank you. London, New York, Tokyo. Okay, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to do. Sorry this has taken so long. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to add some effects to here, and I think I'll put a little Google Map in there as well. So I hope that's been useful to you. If it has, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in web design, we've got some great web design courses below with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers. There's also some great free courses down there. So go ahead and take a look. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.